My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm an associate real estate broker in the state of Alaska. And as always, my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching in real estate. And today we're going to be talking about what's going on in the Matsu Valley. So the Matsu Valley, statistics and numbers wise, is actually the largest real estate market in Alaska right now, which usually that's isn't how it, it usually plays out. We'll talk about why that is, but we'll be jumping into that, looking at the residential, the condos as it is, and the multifamily market. And before we get started though, you know what to do. Give this video a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. So we make sure that the algorithm is blessing this channel. And without further ado, let's jump into today's market update. Now, first off, we want to look at what's going on in the residential market and what's going on for the active inventory. So looking at that, we see that this time last year, there was about 291 properties available on the market. Now it's about 287. Okay, well, that sounds all fine and good. Sounds like we're seeing a very small decrease, not that big of a deal. But let's pan back and look historically. So usually around this time of year, we see that we would have somewhere between about 580 and about 650. So we are in fact seeing like over half of our inventory for the Matsu Valley just kind of dry up right there. And that's really what we've seen for the past couple of years. The lowest that we saw it was about 219 a couple of years ago in 2020. Two and it's slowly like crawling back and um, kind of maintaining right around that that 290 300 range but that's probably not going to change very much in the near future and we'll talk about why in just a bit now the next thing we see is that this time last year 81 properties actually sold for the single family properties and this year 79 so not that much of a difference year over year for what we're seeing it's a little low historically but the fact that we're seeing less of you know about more than half of the inventory just suddenly gone um, that's actually doing pretty good because usually we'd see about 85 to about 100 or so properties sell so the fact that we're just sitting at 81 or sorry 79 is doing pretty good that's about the historical average now this next graph is actually something that kind of surprised me a little bit. I mean, it's not without its precedent. We've seen it a couple times over the years, but what we're seeing is for the month of January, the average sold price actually dipped a little bit in the Matsu Valley, which is something we just normally do not see, especially with the inventory being as low as it is and all the demand we have out there. And I know some people out there are all ready to, to start, start storming the best deal and talk about how, you know, ah, this is it, the market's crashing. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Average sold price went from about 381 to about 360. So first off, just looking at that, that sounds like it's an enormous collapse almost. And it sounds like, oh, for sure, this is it. You know, let's go. What we're seeing though is across the board for the entire year, we still see about that five or 6% increase appreciation for properties in the Matsu Valley. Because there are a couple of months, even last compared to the month before, the year over year, was in fact less than what it was before. But once we get to like the, the big money-making months, like June, July, August, that time frame, we do in fact see that those months more than make up for it. And the rest of them kinda, kinda just keep average. So we're going to have a couple months here and there where we do see less, um, less than an average sole price. We'll see how it unfolds moving forward. I'm not willing to just look at it one month and go, well, that's it. You know, throw your hands up. It's all done. It's all done. Jig is up. I'm not willing to say that just yet, but it is something that we're going to be keeping a close eye on. Next thing we're going to look at is what's going on in the condo market. Now I've said this a almost a hundred times literally at this point, but the condo market in the Matsu Valley never been particularly big because that's not why people move to the Matsu Valley to, to live a condo lifestyle. They wanna have space, do their own thing, so on and so forth. And so when we look at the condo market, we know it's always gonna be pretty small. And what we see is that this time last year, there were three condos available and now there are nine. So. There you go. We're increasing by leaps and bounds there for the inventory. And um, that's, you know, kind of close to what the, the average is. Usually it's about 12 to about 15 or 17. So not by as much. You know, we uh, don't quite have that number yet. But, you know, once we're looking at that small of a number, doesn't really matter. Next thing we see is the number of condos that have actually sold. Last year in January, it was one, and this year in January, it's one. So not a whole lot of moving in the needle there, and that's kind of average for what we usually see for condos for the month of January. 
Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on the average sold price here just because we're only looking at the comparison of one versus one. And once you start doing that, it really comes down to whether or not uh, the Smiths decided to sell their condo or the Johnsons decided to sell their condo. And it, it just really, you can't really draw much of an average there. But the average sold price this time last year for what it's worth for condos, 240 and this year, 300 So Obviously a big difference there, but it really comes down to which specific condos we're looking at because we're just looking at one V one. Like that's, it's really hard to actually draw an average from that. We're gonna jump into the multifamily market in just a minute, but before we do though, I just wanted to make sure you were all aware. If you haven't already received your copy of my relocation guide, those of you who are considering moving up here, do make sure you go to my website down below in the description section. Make sure you register to my website and put relocation guide in the, in the little comment box there so I know what to send you. And also, if you're looking at moving up here or you already live up here and you're just looking for an opportunity to plug in and, and meet people in the area, then do feel free to go check out the description section down below as well. And check out our Alaska monthly meetup. This is something we do once a month where we'll go hiking, sledding, some activity, usually outside, and give people an opportunity to actually get to meet other people and mingle. Because you know it can be intimidating when you're moving to an area meeting new people, and we want to make that as easy for you as possible. So do make sure you go check that out and see what our upcoming events are. That is the only place where I talk about it in that private meetup group. So make sure you go check that out. Now, let's go and finish today's market update looking at the multifamily asset class. Now, this time last year for the multifamily market, we see that there were 32 multifamily properties available and this year, 32. So really, really small decrease, kind of negligible, not a huge swing one way or the other. We see usually around this time of year, historically, it'd be about 50 to about 60 multifamily properties available. So historically, this is less than what we are used to. Next thing we see is that the number of multifamily properties that are actually selling went from eight last year to four this year. So not a, you know, obviously a pretty big swing there. And that is down for what we see historically it was usually we'd see about eight to about 11 multifamily properties selling um, if we're in the month of January. So that is down. And that probably can be attributed to just the interest rates being what they were at least, you know, a couple months previous. Because keep in mind, once we're tracking the number of um, properties that have actually sold, it takes about 60 days for a property to sell in Alaska. So really, it's looking at what was going on about two months ago for when they actually went under contract. So this doesn't surprise me too, too much, but it is something we want to keep an eye on just to make sure there is a, a steady demand for multifamily properties in the Matsu Valley. Last but not least, we see the average sold price win from about $550,000 to $674,000 for the month of January. Now, before a lot of investors start popping the champagne and getting too excited, obviously this is not, it's very difficult to draw an average when we first off have such a small sample size. And number two, when we're looking at multifamily in general, because we're talking about the duplex all the way up to big, you know, commercial properties. So for that reason, it's hard to really draw an average for multifamilies based solely off of this. We'd have to go a couple layers deeper to really start extrapolating useful data. But what I would not be surprised to see is that we are in fact seeing an increase and an appreciation for multifamily uh, market values in the area. So that would not be a surprise. Um, if you wanna know if you have one, and you're wanting to know what it actually is beyond these averages, reach out to me, let's talk and, and get that figured out for you. Now let's give you a quick summary. So if you're a buyer, what this means to me is number one, if I have the ability to jump into this market now versus waiting, I would probably prefer to just jump in right now. And the reason for that is everybody refinanced their homes or bought a house a couple of years ago. Most of these homes are sitting around three or 4%. The interest rates coming down to about upper four, lower fives, probably not gonna be enough to make a lot of sellers decide to just, to get off their, their mortgage they have right now. And that's really comfortable and go find something else. Um, some of them will, but I just, I don't see so many of them doing it that it just keeps up with the demand we're gonna have from all the buyers who've been on the fence for a while suddenly deciding to jump back into the market. So. If I have the ability to do so, I would jump in and avoid 
having to compete with a lot of people with an inventory that is actually going to be a smaller pool than what it was before. Now in the Matsu Valley, we do have new construction and that helps, but new construction is more expensive and it's slower than the resale of homes. And for a lot of people, it's it just makes more sense to be looking at a um, be looking at a home that's a resale and then they can go and just fix it up and do whatever they want to it and they're going to be able to actually live in it in the meantime. I know new construction gets really glamorized. For some people, it's awesome. I don't want to take that away from them. For a lot of other people, the, the juice is not worth the squeeze. If you're a seller, still a great market to be in. Not the same market that we had a couple of years ago though. So if you are remembering what your neighbor said where you know, them and their agent didn't have to do any work and they just posted it on MLS and they had 10 offers the next day and you're expecting that, I wouldn't expect that, okay? We're gonna have to do some work. We're gonna have to do some marketing. We're gonna have to, you know, do just some basic staging and stuff like that, make sure we're on point when we're doing this stuff, but it's still gonna be a strong market and it's not gonna be probably as strong as it was the years prior. Now, if you are, an investor for my investors out there as always make sure your numbers actually balance out and look for the properties that are under rented in other words where the landlord there just doesn't really have their rents up to what the market value is for that property because those are going to be some great opportunities and if the interest rates are coming down then it's going to make a lot of numbers really balance out a lot easier so this has been my market update for what's going on in the Matsu Valley. If you have any further questions, do make sure you reach out to me. I have the website down below. You can go ahead and register and reach out to me that way. That's going to be the most for sure fire way to get a hold of me. And without further ado, I'm going to let you get going and we'll see you next time.